Hi, I'm Deepak from Reliant Institute of Oil and Gas. I'm a trainer here. So in, in our last video, we have uh, discussed about what is oil and gas and uh, what are upstream, midstream and downstream and uh, what are the things we need to know in order to enter into the oil and gas. So in this video today, we are going to discuss about uh, how NDT is helpful in entering into the oil and gas. So what is NDT? There are numerous videos about like uh, what is NDT and the difference between DT and NDT. So we are not going to discuss those things. We are, now, we are going to specially discuss about how NDT and what are the uh, certification bodies uh, for NDT and how the NDT is useful in oil and gas industry and other mechanical industry. So if you see here, the content of our discussion is uh, first the NDT certification bodies, then uh, what are the levels in uh, NDT and how we are going to train the candidates based on the training document given by ASNT, American Society of Non-Destructive Testing. And then uh, what are the current uh, methods? So in 2010, it was like uh, uh, 12 to 13 methods. Now it is around 18 to 19 methods uh, in NDT. And uh, what are the basic methods is required for entering into the oil and gas and other mechanical sectors? So the first uh, and uh, very uh, common certification body is ASNT, American Society of Non-Destructive Testing. So they are training the uh, candidates based on American standard. And in other hand, we have PCN, Personal Certification for Non-Destructive Testing. So its certifying body is BINDT, that is British Institute of Non-Destructive Testing. Then the uh, in, uh, common international standard is there, ISO or EN, European norms, 9712. So uh, another one is CSIP NDT. So there is a uh, organization called TWI, the Welding Institute, which is in Cambridge, UK. So they are the certification body for uh, CSIP 3.1, 3.2, B gas, etc. So they have introduced uh, CSIP NDT. So almost we have ASNT, PCN, ISO, CSIP NDT and also we have rope access NDT, IRATA they call. So we are not going to uh, get into that subject. So in ASNT uh, or even in PCN, we have three levels like level 1, level 2 and level 3. So level 1 uh, we can, if, if a particular candidate is trained, uh, you know, for level 1 grade, so they will be uh, working as an assistant technician. Then if someone has level 2, they will be a certified NDT technician or inspector or engineer. So it depends upon experience, it depends upon the basic qualification we have. So if you are 10th uh, or plus 2, so you can initially work as a technician and based on your experience, you can uh, level up to uh, inspector grade. So if you are a diploma holder or a degree holder, so first initially you have to work as a technician at least for a year to know the things happening in the site. Then later on with your strong uh, sound knowledge, uh, technical knowledge and uh, practical oriented uh, knowledge, codes and standard knowledge in codes and standard, then uh, other uh, part of documentation things. So you can become a NDT engineer. Then if you are uh, level 3, you will be a signing authority. According to ASNT, you have a authority to certify uh, and also prepare a training document. Uh, I, even in the site, you have a, uh, you know, uh, signing authority of uh, signing the uh, NDT documents, reports, handling reports, then uh, evaluating. So you will be respond responsible for both NDT, NDE and also NDI. So uh, level 3 is a higher grade. So if you about to uh, write an exam for level 3, basically you should get certified for level 2 after quite long experience and exposure to the wide uh, industry, mechanical industries and pro projects. So you can able to 
uh, go for level 3 certification. So uh, we are certifying or giving a training to the candidates uh, as per ASNT training document or certification do document. So we call it as a written practice. So uh, every year uh, the ASNT is uh, producing a new written practice or you know they are bringing up uh, different changes in uh, training as well as certification criteria. So that document is called written practice. So the document is named like this SNT TC 1A. So what is SNT? Society of Non-Destructive Testing and what is TC? Technical Certification and document number is 1A. So if you are certified NDT technician or you having a level 2 uh, NDT certificate you should be looking for the training document number and the level 3 certify, certified level 3 uh, sign signature and his ID. So this is a very important thing so wherever you go if you have a level 2 certification you can go anywhere in this world you can attend any kind of mechanical projects so wherever testing is required NDT non-destructive testing is required. So, uh, how many uh, NDT methods so far up to now? So, you know, long back when I did, uh, you know, NDT uh, certification in 2010, so I was uh, knowing only about 13 methods, but now almost uh, 19 to 20 methods are there. So, we are going to see all those. Then, what are the major methods we need? and how it is applicable in oil and gas industry and then other mechanical sectors. So the first, according to ASNT, ASNT is following ASME section 5 for NDT procedure. So what is ASME? American Society of Mechanical Engineers section 5. So according to that codes and standard, so article 1 is for general requirement of NDT like procedure, documentation, all those things will be there in article 1. An article 2 for radiographic testing, conventional radiography uh, where we use uh, X radiation and gamma radiation. Then we have UT, article 4. So here in ASNT we have article 4 and article 5. Same like in PCN, we have 3.1 and 3.2. So 3.1 is ultrasonic testing of materials and 3.2 is ultrasonic testing of weld. So here also we have article 4 for uh, weld scanning or weld inspection, article 5 ultrasonic testing of materials. Then article 6 is for penetrant testing, uh, we can also call it as liquid penetrant or dipenetrant inspection or dipenetrant testing. Then we have article 7 MPT, magnetic particle testing or magnetic particle inspection. Then in article 8, eddy current testing. Then article 9 visual testing or visual inspection and article 10 is leak testing, 11, 12, 13 is acoustic emission, then 15 is alternating current field measurement technique, 16 is a basic principle of MPT that is MFL. So what is MFL? Magnetic flux leakage test. Then article 17 is RFT, so remote field testing we say. Then other methods are like infrared. So it is having another name inside. We call it as a thermography. So thermography, then uh, you know ground penetrating radar testing, uh, guided wave testing, laser testing, then vibration analysis. So where we use this vibration analysis mainly in bridge construction. So in bridge construction or any structural project, so we use this. Uh, vibration analysis by the design engineers. Then we have neutron radiography where we don't use X-ray and gamma ray. Instead, we use neutrons to uh, you know inject into the material, and uh, we are collecting it and we are evaluating it like how where the defect present. So almost I have given 18. So another one is also there. We call it as electromagnetic testing. Okay. So common methods, what are the common methods is very much required in oil and gas and uh, other me mechanical sectors. So the first thing is visual testing. 
So everyone thinks that visual testing is something like only by looking at the product we will do the testing. No, not only that. So we also use gauges like Cambridge gauge. Uh, we use, uh, you know, multi-purpose gauge. We use high-low gauge. We use uh, magnifiers. Then uh, we use tapper gauge. We use uh, sprit gauge. Then uh, we also use the fillet gauge. Okay, so you know, in some cases, like in uh, heat exchangers, uh, boilers, like water tube boilers, heat exchanger, or any tubes, capillary tubings, so we are using this boroscope inspection. So, boroscope inspection is a part of visual inspection. So, we have something like you would have heard in the medical industry, like we have uh, uh, endoscopy. So those who have more ulcers, they, the doctor try to find the, uh, you know, the level of uh, infection by using endoscopy. So same like, like that, we are using boroscope. So we are, uh, you know, inserting the tube into the small, small capillary tubings or small, small pipes. So it will, for example, see this. So we have a heat exchanger tubings like this, boiler tubings like this. So we insert inside the uh, tubes and we try to see any other blockage or any other uh, chemical precipitations. So through that we perform the visual inspection. So this is just a small thing, clums. So they like that. We have several devices, equipments for visual inspection also. So next thing is liquid penetrant testing or dye penetrant testing or dye penetrant inspection. So in a previous, uh, you know, uh, one of the video, I have spoken about what is NDE, NDT and NDI. So in inspection, both testing and evaluation will be involved. So we will be using a, a penetrant which contains a dye. So we, it helps to indicate the defects, Ex example cracks. So you can see a crack here in the flange and you can see a fluorescent method. We can, uh, you can see a crack here in a fluorescent technique. So we have both visible technique and fluorescent technique. So next we have magnetic particle inspection. So in this we use yoke method, central conductor method, headshot method, prod method, coil method. So here in the picture you can see the very familiar one that is yoke method. Then we have uh, uh, ultrasonic testing. So in ultrasonic testing two methods are the straight beam inspection, angle beam inspection. Straight beam inspection for materials, angle beam inspection for well scanning. So in the another part of this UT is UTG. So mostly used in shutdown projects. So to know the thickness of a material. So we also call it as a thickness gauging method. So the advanced technique, technique is TOFD, time of flight diffraction. So in one side, uh, transmitter will be there. In other side, uh, receiver will be there. So based on this pitch and catch method in UT, so we can able to find exactly uh, where the defect is present in the welded specimen or weldments. So this is phase array ultrasonic testing. So in one probe itself, multiple uh, array of uh, uh, piezoelectric crystals are placed in different angles. So which will give a clarity about the defects. So we have a radiographic testing like X-ray and gamma ray inspection. Then we also give training uh, like how to interpret the film or report. Then we also teach basics of eddy current and also we give a separate certification for eddy current testing. So how this helps in oil and gas sector. So in oil and gas like uh, we have reconstruction, we have uh, you know like storage uh, project, then oil transportation, gas transportation units, then also we have a refinery pipelines, uh, equipments coming in the refinery, etc. So we can, uh, it helps, the entity helps us to know the quality of material and also we can able to know the quality of uh, wealth uh, made in the uh, material as well as in the structures as well as in any other pipelines, okay. So apart from this oil and gas, where we can get a job if we know NDT. So we can go for oil and uh, the automobile parts, manufacturing, then aerospace, castings, uh, steel manufacturing, pipe manufacturing, tube manufacturing, then uh, structural element manufacturing, like uh, you know the material inspection, 
then uh, weld inspection and structural construction project shipyards power plant chemical fertilizer unit power, then uh, pharmaceutical unit then boiler pressure part fabrication vessel fabrication then uh, pipe fittings manufacturing of fittings like elbow uh, flanges valve manufacturing and valve inspection etc so uh, we come to a conclusion like so we so far we have discussed uh, all about like uh, how the ndt is uh, helping us into uh, you know getting into the oil and gas industry or uh, apart from oil and gas industry wherever we can go uh, or apply for a job and uh, i hope that everything we have discussed so far uh, you have understood uh, if you have doubts please uh, contact us or you can call to the number given in the description below and um, we will meet in the next uh, session so until then deepak from reliant institute of oil and gas